Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California on a quiet April afternoon. Um, here we have the brand new Faco rear crash bar specifically designed for this newer style Vespa GTS HPE, which in the United States is a 2020 model year or later. So it's got the updated motor and they did some cosmetic changes that some accessories are not compatible with. Um, part number on these crash bars in chrome finish is GTS 12F HPE. And they can be found on our website, scooterwest.com. Also, watch the prior video that covers all the Faco accessories that are all new that fit this newer 2020 GTS. And also, many of them fit the older Vespa, and they're just an updated version of the accessory as well. Um, I'm going to have installation videos for each one of these accessories and talk about what they do fit and what they don't. Uh, but here we're going to go into installation of these accessories. Let me go on to the tools needed here. All right, here's the basic tools needed to install the rear crash bars from Faco to remove the skirts, get access to the area you're going to install the bracket. You need a T25 and a T30 Torx driver. Uh, remove your license frame. You'll need whatever hardware is holding your plate on, the, the tools to remove that hardware, along with a number two Phillips, preferably a shorty one. And then install the brackets. You're gonna need a four millimeter Allen driver and a 10 millimeter wrench. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna go ahead and remove these side skirts, as I like to call them, all the way around. One thing to keep in mind, these reflectors are very fragile on these new scooters. Uh, alternatively, we're kind of trickling out the different colors of the reflector plug. So when you remove these reflectors, left behind is a pair of holes. Obviously, you want to plug them with something that looks better than a hole there or a black plug. So we have color match painted uh, plugs in the colors of the scooters. You can check out our website, R Plugs, to search R Plugs and you'll see all the different colors that we have in stock and available. So first of all, you're gonna remove with a T25 Torx driver, go to each side, remove the single screw that holds the front most part of the skirt. Keep in mind the screws are actually different between the left and the right side. So don't just mix them all up. So go ahead and if you have a plate on the scooter, remove the plate from the license plate frame or the holder, whatever you want to call it. It's a metal bracket that carries the plate. And if you're wondering about these fasteners, look in the description. I do have the part number for the whole kit of Torex uh, license plate fasteners. This kind of keeps people from uh, stealing your, your license plate, which I know sometimes is a problem. So from behind this license frame, there's a fastener here and a pair of fasteners underneath this reflector. So take your sh short Phillips uh, stubby driver and go ahead and remove, typically I like to remove one of the lower fasteners, you know, either one, and then loosen the, the second lower fastener. Keep in mind there's gonna be a bunch of washers with this as well, so it looks like that. And this next one, we'll just loosen it up. I'm not gonna take it all the way out. And then the topmost one's a little harder to get to, but it is possible. So you need a little stubby Phillips, or you could use a little right angle ratchety uh, Phillips driver, but the stubby works fine. Typically, you can just hold this nut. If not, you could use an eight millimeter um, wrench to hold this. and go ahead and remove the screw. Keep in mind there's some washers behind there that are probably are gonna fall off. One thing about this 20 tween model, the skirts are like much, much harder to take off because you gotta dismantle this license bracket. And to me, that's kind of a negative when it comes to serviceability. You know, it's like, if you gotta get this stuff off to do an air filter change, there's a lot more work. So go ahead and separate the, the screws and all that, set those aside. So I recommend removal of the taillight when removing the skirts because typically the painted surface will want to grind on the bezel. 
So remove the single fastener that holds the tail light assembly, T30 Torx driver, longer screw with a wave washer. Go ahead and lift the tail light away from the bodywork. And it's got these two clips and a single connector. If you look from the back side, you could this clip right here will release the connector. And the two clips that retain the upper part of the tail light are these two guys right here. And now we'll remove the two fasteners that hold the lower section of the skirts on. So take your 10 millimeter wrench and pretty much right underneath this line of the tail light or turn signal, you're gonna find a nut back there. And you can use the closed end wrench to kind of get, break the nut free. And just with your hand, pull that out and repeat with the other side. So once you have that all loose, you'll be able to pull either the left or right side away from the bodywork. So there's a little clip right there in the back that kind of holds the, the pair together. You have the threaded stud and then three rubber plugs that hold this part of the skirt to the steel bodywork of the scooter. And then once you get to the front ones, just pull it away from the scooter, like kind of towards the back and away. And go ahead and do the same with the left side. So one thing to keep in mind is with the Faco rear bars, they weren't intended to be used with these US reflectors. And two ways you can go about it. If you just remove them and don't plug the holes and you don't care about the reflectors, very simple to remove. Usually those will break off on their own. You could flush cut these uh, plastic pegs and the reflector will fall right out. Um, alternative, if you wanna save the reflector, if you're very careful, you could cut these clips or fold over these tabs on the clips. And, you know, it takes a lot of time to do, but each one of these little tabs right here, you could fold it up. And, you know, obviously the clip is now trash, but you could save the reflector if you wanted to. So each one of those like little ears, you could use a, a little pick and a needle nose and fold them up. So you get underneath these ears and just carefully, carefully fold up. Usually you just need to do one or two of them. And then you're able to shift the clip out of the way. Usually the clip is trashed at this point. You just gotta keep in mind they're very, very fragile reflectors. Uh, they were definitely an afterthought most people just tend to want to get rid of them and never have them again. So you fold up two clips and now you can get this right out of the way. And once the two clips are out of the way, or if you just cut the pegs, like the easy way, the reflector would be trash, but fall right off. But now you can just pull the reflector right out of the way. And this is an optional step. If you want to fill the holes where they look nice, we typically have color match our reflector plugs and they're called R plugs. For this color, it's dash HA for Dolomiti Gray. You just take a pair of the little plugs and typically they'll fit right in there. Sometimes if they don't fit all that well, you may need to deburr the hole a little bit and you can do that with a pocket knife or a um, Zacto blade. Just carefully deburr the hole, kind of rotate the blade around. The R plugs have always been a very popular option. I see people buy the reflectors and then they say it broke again and then they buy another reflector. Like what's, what's the reflector gonna do? <laughs> Is it gonna stop somebody really from hitting you at night on the side? Maybe, but it's just there to, to meet the standards for the United States to import these scooters and that's all they're there for. If the reflector plug is still stubborn, you can open up the hole. You don't need to necessarily get a drill bit out but just with the knife, go from the inside and just kind of open up the hole. You don't want to make it too large. If it is too large, no big deal. You can use a small amount of glue to hold the plug right in place. And it should have a pretty tight friction fit, just like that. It's not coming out, no glue needed. 
And with the R plug kit, it includes enough of these plugs to do the front fender. And that's mostly where people want to get rid of the reflectors because they're pretty hideous looking on the front fender. So you have this pair of brackets that are included with the rear crash bar kit. There's a left and a right side. Uh, this being the right side, this being the left side. And with your T30 uh, Torx driver, remove this single fastener right here. Holds the floorboard in place. And put the bracket between the screw. Just reuse the same screw and go ahead and tighten the screw. So as you can see, this metal bracket just barely tucks underneath this bracket right here. But you want to leave it just enough where you can move it. Don't tighten the screw so much if you need to make minor adjustments to the position of this bracket. And go ahead and do the same on the left side. So now that we have the plugs in there, and you do the same with the left side, you take these pair of plastic prongs and just tuck tuck them into the front two clips in the, the floorboard. So you can see I kind of have an angle to it. And once you close up this gap right here, right in the front, you can work your way from the front towards the rear with these rubber uh, pins and plugs. Or they're, they're plastic pins going into a rubber uh, plug. And you have this single fastener back here that, that um, needs to engage with the hole right here. So once you have the pair of rear skirts on, the tricky part is getting this back seam to line up. So essentially, the, fa the holes where the fasteners mount, they kind of have a little lip to them. So you may need to um, just kind of stretch the skirts over these two spots that the fasteners go in, and you'll close up the gap. You'll hear a little snap when it's snapped over it. Make sure that they're both snapped over that lip and you should be good. Move on to the other one. Now you got all these in. Now we can jump to installation of the bars. I'll save the tail light for the last when I put the license frame back in place. So go ahead and take your right crash bar. This rearmost mounting point kind of goes over that threaded stud. That's right below the turn sail, the front front corner of the turn sail. Go ahead and hook that over. And the problem is you don't have much of the threads revealed after this, but just enough to get the, the nut started. And then next, go ahead and line this all up. So this bracket part of the crash bar is towards the back. Uh, the new bracket is towards the front. Typically, you put the fastener right through. Go ahead and put the round uh, washer, the split washer, and then these are nylon locking nuts right here. And just get it started at this point. Move back to the rear fastener with your 10 millimeter wrench. And go ahead and snug this this fastener. Just with a little 10 millimeter wrench is all you need. You can get a socket back there if you wanted to with a little quarter inch ratchet, but a wrench does the trick. And there we go. It's quite snug. Look at this gap. Usually I put my finger between it. it feels about the same. It feels really good gap all the way around. Now move to this uh, front fastener. Hold the Allen with a four, four millimeter Allen key. You could use a ratchet or, or just a regular wrench to do the trick. And keep in mind these uh, nylon locking nuts, they, they have a lot of friction as you're tightening them. That's normal. So you kind of have a lot of resistance, can't really hand tighten this, this nut onto that screw. And check your gap, you can make small adjustments as needed. 
And go ahead and do the same on the left side. So go ahead and reinstall the tail light. You got the single seal connector with the tab that faces towards the bottom. Don't really see it in the, the camera, but you'll just listen to a nice little click. You know that's uh, connected. And get the tail light lined up with the uppermost ones. Just give it a nice gentle nudge and it will snap right back in place. Single fastener at the bottom of the tail light with the little wave washer T30. Now it's time for the license frame. So take the screw that has the split washer and the flat washer, the short one, pop it through the lower mounting point. We'll just get it started for right this moment. Take the third screw, the topmost screw, pop it through from the backside. And while you do this step, you want to just hold it right there with your finger and then put the flat washer, the split washer, and last, the small five millimeter nut that needs an eight millimeter wrench if you want to tighten it. Oftentimes you can just hold it by with your fingers. It'd be just perfectly fine. Put your license plate back on and you're pretty much all set up with the new sexy looking Faco crash bars. So now we got the accessories all installed here, your crash bars. If you want, you can remove the labels if you like. You may need to use a little WD-40 or goo gone to remove the adhesive residue. I would recommend just off the bat, putting a coat of wax on these or silicon spray um, and continuing to do that every few months, especially if your scooter is exposed to the elements or you're close to uh, the ocean where there's salt air mist that kind of tends to corrode the accessories. Um, this, with any chrome accessory, you want to keep them up. And if they do get a small amount of corrosion, you can always use some real fine steel wool to take off the corrosion and then protect it with a wax or a um, light silicon based um, oil to kind of protect the metal finish. I uh, hope everybody likes all these accessories. Again, I have installation videos of all the new GTS specific HPE accessories from FACO, or you can watch the intro video that shows all the accessories and talks about what they fit and how they look all together on the scooter. This is Robot from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Support our channel by shopping on our web store, ScooterWest.com. We do not monetize our channel like most other YouTube channels out there. Uh, make a small amount of money on the videos and how many views. We don't do that. That's why there's no ads on our videos. Uh, help us out. Shop from our store, whether it's a little order or a large order. If you mind, web orders over $100 typically get free shipping in North America. Uh, also, you can certainly email us for a shipping quote overseas and we'll get you the most competitive rate we can if you're not in North America. Until next time, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West. Happy scooting. I'll see you in the next one.